Hey, YouTubers, Kevin Noe here. Um, I have uh, finally gotten around to another update here, as you can see. Um, I wanted to do sort of a part two follow-up to the post that I had a while back, and I'll, I'll link at the end of this video, about um, Lang firing revolvers. Because these are a staple of our theatrical community because they theoretically have the ability to fire half-load or quarter-only or primer-only blanks, which semi-automatics sadly cannot. <laughs> they, uh, they can also be found in 22s and things like that, which also semi-automatics, for the most part, cannot. I'll have a little update about that later, maybe. But, unfortunately, uh, most of the blank firing revolvers that I, uh, the ones that I liked best, the uh, Echo, uh, Viper, and, uh, and some of the predecessors like that, uh, that were the 38, using the 38 crimp blanks, um, or just general 38 rimmed blanks like this, uh, those have gone away. So these are the standard revolver blanks, and you can see that they've got a, a rim that sticks out, a sort of a lip that sticks out over the rim. Here we have a revolver blank and a semi-auto blank, and you can see the revolver blank has the rim that sticks out. Semi-auto blank has a little notch that goes in. This makes a lot of sense from a design perspective, because with a revolver, the round drops in from the end, and the little lip keeps it from dropping through too far, and it lets you use rounds that it, where it doesn't matter how long it is, as long as it doesn't stick out the front. So you can use shorter rounds, you can use crimp blanks in a real revolver, things like that. Uh, but for some reason, as discussed previously, the only uh, blank firing revolvers that are readily available right now that I trust, so apart from the Brunis, <laughs> are these Zoraki, uh, R1 and R2, and right now all the ones they're importing are made to use 9mm PAK. That being these semi-auto blanks, which are only available in full load. Why the heck would you do that? <laughs> so frustrating. And unfortunately, while the, uh, the interior diameter should be the same, if you try to load one of these revolver blanks in here, let me find one that's already been fired, there we go. Um, even though they'll go in, it just tends to not rotate well. It kind of jams up when it gets to the to the top where it actually needs to go to fire. There's just not enough space here at the back of the cylinder. And it really just kind of gums it up. Um, and it's, it's this weird angled thing where it'll actually rotate fine at the bottom. There's enough room here, but not right up here. It's just really tight where the firing pin hits. Um, and I'm not, I don't know why they designed them this way. But it means that you can't use revolver blanks with these, you have to use semi-auto blanks. And as previously mentioned, these full-load 9mm PAK blanks are way too loud for most of our theaters, especially uh, smaller houses like Dobama, our, our Cleveland's off-Broadway equivalent that I've worked with a number of times. Uh, and that's one of the few ones that still consistently likes to use blanks for things. What I've had to do to make this work, and to give them the options they want in terms of barrel length and color and all, um, is drill these out. Now, the good news is you can turn a full load blank into a primer only blank relatively easy. Um, all you have to do is take out the powder. Uh, so I'm not having to recap it or anything because I'm not trying to turn it into a, a half load or anything like that. Um, all you gotta do is drill out the front. I also did this with some eight millimeters because I have a, a funky little eight millimeter revolver. Um, and I thought I'd try that for that too. So really all you have to do, uh, I tried carefully cutting it out with an X-Acto knife first because I was worried about power tools and stuff. But after some experimentation, I found really fastest, easiest thing to do, just slowly drill through the front, dump out the powder, um, clean it up a little bit so there aren't bits of plastic that are going to go flying out or anything, and it's good to go. And for the record, no, you can't just cut the end off. I tried that as well. But the brass now becomes short enough that uh, it actually just kind of drops a little too far in. It needs that length to stop it at the right uh, depth for the firing pin to be able to hit it. So, no just cutting it off with the jeweler saw like I tried. Um, but this also does let you see uh, how far into the brass the plastic goes, which I thought was kind of interesting. All right, so this is gonna be a paper test with a front vent 38 revolver, and these are not, or not 38, this is the, one of those nine millimeter PIK revolvers from Zeraki. And these are nine millimeter PIK rounds that have just had all the powder taken out. So it is homemade primer only rounds. And I'm just gonna do a little paper test here. See what it does. Still moved a little bit at that range. All right, another three rounds here. Um, full disclosure, I'm also using like my crappy old blanks that are the least reliable because wouldn't want to use them on a gig. Might as well use them for testing. Yeah. So let's try two feet from the paper. Moved a little bit. 
So it does seem like three feet is probably about our minimum distance here to not have any visible impact. Is probably fairly safe. I'm still not gonna have it go off in an actor's face where they're looking. I'm gonna have them kind of flinch and, and turn away because of the way that this particular thing we're working on right now, uh, Life Sucks <laughs> is the name of the play. Um, the actor walks on, fires four shots, and then it clicks some more. But they walk on carrying the gun, shoot the gun, so the other character has time to kind of flinch and turn away and then realize that they haven't gotten shot. Um, so, um, and then we've got a, a decent amount of distance there, so I'm not too worried about uh, uh, about that. We, we did some tests, and I think it'll be just fine. And these seem to be working fine. Uh, the, the plastic, little bit of plastic that I'm not able to shave away from the inside without going too bit far into it, uh, isn't going flying or anything. Um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, now I will say I had another, uh, another thought on this, which is, well, what about real nine millimeter casings? Cause I know folks who, uh, who reload their own shells. I thought, what if I could get a hold of, uh, of one of those, of a nine millimeter shell, get someone who reloads their own ammo and just don't put a bullet in the end. Um, cause that could be a lot more efficient, uh, than buying nine millimeter PAK blanks and drilling them out each time. Two problems with that. One I was kind of aware of is the, the length. I wasn't sure if the, uh, let me get a little closer here. We got the, uh, here we go. Nine millimeter PAK with the green, nine millimeter PAK here. Uh, and uh, the nine millimeter Luger real casing that is primed here. So there is a difference in length and I wasn't sure if that was gonna be a problem or not. But what I didn't realize is there's also a difference in, uh, in girth. <laughs> um, so I sanded it off a bit to make it a little easier to see. You can see how there's kind of like a scrape right about there in this casing. So what I had not known is apparently there's just enough difference that nine millimeter PAK is a tiny bit thinner. So these don't actually go in. They go about that far and then they stick. So nine millimeter PAK brass is not the same diameter apparently as normal nine millimeter brass is unfortunately and i've tried this with a couple of different revolvers and a couple of different rounds and it's that does seem to be the case so so much for that idea back to drilling it is now the next question of course is if you have somebody who does reload and you can give them nine millimeter pak brass can they punch the primer out and replace the primer in that and just reload blank brass with the primer that i don't know yet um, none of the people that I know who reload are local to me in Cleveland. Now, if you happen to be watching this and you're in Cleveland and you reload, I would love to hear from you. Um, there's other experiments I still want to try as well with like using half moon or full moon clips with these so that you could actually eject them a little bit better. This is the other issue is that revolvers are made to be used with revolver rounds where if you push on that ejector, it'll push the rounds out. It doesn't work with semi-auto style rounds because they don't have a lip at the end. Um, so that'll be one of the next experiments to try as well. Um, but uh, if anybody uh, wants to try reloading new pistol primers into 9mm PAK spent brass, I would love to, to try that experiment next. And uh, maybe we'll find an economical answer that can turn some of these uh, Zaraki revolvers, which are only available in 9mm PAK, into more equivalent of a, a 22 or a primer only 38 blank revolver, which would make them once again useful because they're fairly well built and fairly reliable and I, I, I want to like them. They just made a dumb choice. <laughs> All right, so that's my update for today. Uh, my semester is wrapping up, so I may have more time this summer. You might see a little bit more regular updates to PewTube again, um, or you might not. We'll see, because I don't get paid for them or anything. But if you have questions, if there's something you want to see, you can always drop me a line. So until that happens, stay safe, look good, have fun, and uh, keep fighting the good fight and looking good while doing it.